Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is electronic medical records are a mess. Now, why is that? I'm going to explain to you a problem that many of you probably are not even aware that exists in healthcare. But almost all the doctors and nurses that are watching this video, they probably know what I'm talking about when I bring this up. So the electronic medical record is a mess when it comes to the notes that are actually written in or rather typed in by the doctors and nurses, especially by the doctors. Now, what is the purpose of the documentation in the electronic medical record? Well, it's got three purposes, really. It's for communication with other practitioners, whether it be with other doctors or nurses or the physical therapist or the social worker, etc. It's for billing purposes, and I'll get into this in a minute, but this is where in order to bill, there has to be documentation in the medical record to substantiate specific billing codes. In order to bill specific billing codes, there have to be key words and key parts of the record documented. Otherwise, you can't bill for it. And then lastly, it's a legal document. So if there's ever a, uh, a lawsuit, I mean, they're going to go to the medical record as the source of truth of what actually happened. It's, if it's documented, it happened. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. If it's documented a certain way, then but it was done a different way, then they're going to go with the documentation, okay? So, now, in terms of the billing, as it relates to the professional fees for things like office visits or for the doctor seeing you in the inpatient setting or even the doctor seeing you in the ER, those are referred to as E&M codes or evaluation and management codes. They're a subtype of CPT codes. Now, the E&M codes are very easy to spot because they all start with 99. And for a, a new patient visit, a new encounter, you've never seen this patient before, it's a 99201, and then it goes 02, 03, 04, and 05. And the 1 through 5 are the differences in level of complexity of the visit. So a 1 is the simplest, and a 5 is the most complicated. Now, for an established patient, so you go and you see the doctor, but then you got to come back in a couple of weeks for a follow-up appointment. They use a different set of codes for those established patients. It's 99211. So instead of it being a zero, it's a one as the second to last digit. And again, it's one through five as the last digits, depending upon the level of complexity. One being the simplest and five being the most complicated. Now, in order to build these uh, EM codes, there has to be documentation for uh, history, in other words, tell me about what's going on. You got a sore throat, you've got a stomach ache, what have you. There has to be a physical exam, listening to the heart, listening to the lungs, uh, palpating the abdomen, and then there has to be what they refer to as medical decision making. Now, doctors don't think of this in terms of medical decision making. That's just what the billers or the coders say. So literally, the doctors are writing all this or typing all this in the chart. And then typically they're choosing a billing code. So they're choosing 99201 through 5. But then they typically what has to happen is, is the, the, the coders in the hospital system, not for all the charts, but they'll just abstract and they'll just take samples of certain charts to say, okay, when you build a 99205, did you document everything in the chart to be consistent with a 99205? And when the doctors are writing notes, we refer to them as what's referred to as a SOAP note. And SOAP is an acronym for Subjective, Objective, and Assessment and Plan. So subjective is the history, because it's the history per the patient's point of view around what happened. And then objective is the physical exam in terms of like what you're listening to or feeling or seeing. And it also includes evaluation of things like the lab tests and any imaging studies like x-rays or CT scans. And then the assessment and plan is essentially the medical decision making where you say, okay, well, this is the differential diagnosis of what I think it could be, yada, yada, yada. I, um, you know, let's do these tests or let's treat with this medication because this is what we think it's going to be. This person has symptoms consistent with heartburn. It could either be acid reflux disease or um, eosinophilic uh, esophagitis, given the patient's lack of history of any other allergies, less likely to be eosinophilic esophagitis, most likely to be uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, will treat with a PPI, and so that's documented as the plan, okay? Now, there are specific sub-rules to those rules. 
So the history itself has to have a chief complaint, it has to have a past medical history, it has to have a social history, it has to have a family history, and it has to have a review of systems where you're like, okay, you're coming in for your sore throat, but I'm going to ask you, are you having any problems with headaches? Are you having any problems with rash? Are you having any problems with constipation or diarrhea? So that's a review of systems. Systems. It might not be related to your chief complaint at all of sore throat, but they still got to go through and ask all these questions about your skin and your bowels and all sorts of stuff, okay? So... Um, now, the exam, there's different levels of the exam. It can either be focused, detailed, or comprehensive. A focused exam only examines two parts of the body or two organ systems. A detailed exam examines four parts of the body or four organ systems. And a comprehensive exam it, uh, examines eight parts of the body or eight organ systems. And you can only bill certain levels or complexity based upon if you did a focused, detailed, or a comprehensive exam. Lastly, the medical decision-making and the assessment and plan, this whole thing also requires a certain amount of face-to-face -face time, ranging from 10 minutes to 60 minutes for a new patient visit. So a 99201 is 10 minutes with a patient, and a 99205 is 60 minutes with a patient. Notice, that is face-to-face -face time with the patient. Any time that is spent outside of the room technically doesn't count. So what is, what is all this called? What is all this called? All this is called a lot. This is a ton of required documentation. Now, the electronic medical record allows what word processing allows to do for everyone else in the world, which doctors didn't have before the electronic medical record. And it's the most powerful part of the entire medical record. And it is what is referred to as the copy button and the paste button. That's right. So what do doctors do with all of these documentation requirements? They copy a previous note either from themselves or they copy another doctor's note and they paste it into their own note so that they don't have to rewrite all of this stuff that is required for billing. Notes are filled with copying and pasting. How much copying and pasting are in electronic medical records, you ask? Aha! They just did a study that was released in the Journal of the American Medical Association on the 26th of September, 2022, that found that 50% of the text in the electronic medical record for inpatient notes, outpatient notes, and uh, ER visit notes were copied and pasted from other notes. 50% of the notes were copied and pasted. That is a lot, and that causes a lot of problems and leads to a lot of the mess within the electronic medical record system. Let me explain. So this study was performed at the University of Pen uh, Pennsylvania Hospital System in, around uh, Philadelphia. It was done over a six-year period of time from 2015 to 2020. And they found that the amount of copying and pasting actually increased over time. It, it, back in 2015, it was only 33% of the text was copied and pasted. And then they, and they used uh, AI to actually examine the text and they saw what was verbatim from previous or other notes. And that's how they determined what was copied and pasted. And it increased from 33% back in 2015 to 54% in 2020. So it was bad before at a third of the documentation was copy and pasted. And it's only getting worse. Who knows? It's 2022 now. It could be a lot more than 54% now. Now, the EMRs themselves are actually built to make this copying and pasting happen. So a very large, prominent EMR, which I will not name the name of, but it literally has a copy button with functionality where you can go into any note from any doctor. It could be yourself, it could be from another doctor, and you can just click copy and that note immediately becomes your note. It changes the name. It goes from Dr. Robert's name to Dr. Bricker's name. Now, it also, does some helpful things. Like it puts in the new vital signs. So if the vital signs from yesterday were in yesterday's note or a different doctor's note, then it'll put the vital signs for today in there. And then also for the lab values, it'll put like the, the complete blood count, uh, the complete metabolic panel, et cetera. That'll be the, the INR, which is a measure of, of how um, the, the, the sort of the clotting level uh, of the blood, then that from today's labs will be put in there. Okay, so fine. So. It's done as a time-saving saving mechanism because the doctors have to do all this stuff for billing purposes. But the problem is, is then you then copy and paste things that might have been true yesterday or might have been true for that other doctor, but they're not true for you or they're not true for the patient today. 
So one, it creates what's called chart lore. So you start getting these things that are just repeated, repeated, repeated in the chart. And you're like, I mean, and if you go back and you look or you talk to the patient, you're like, well, is that actually true? And a lot of the times when you talk to the patient, you're like, oh, well, that's not really the case at all. One of the common places for that is for allergies. Like the chart, it'll be copied and pasted over and over and over again that the person has an allergy to like IV contrast dye. And then you go and you talk to them, like, what's your, what's your, what's your allergy to the IV contrast dye? Like, oh, it made me feel all warm and it gave me this weird metallic taste in my mouth. It's like, it's not an allergy. Like, that's what it does. Like, the majority of people who get IV contrast dye, like, they feel that way when they get IV contrast dye. And that's a problem because CT scans with IV contrast dye are much more effective than CT scans without IV contrast dye. And so if you don't give the IV contrast dye because of some sort of chart lore allergy, then you're going to get a suboptimal study and you might miss, like, a tumor or some sort of abnormal um, arterial, you know, formation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so... The, so that's one problem, is that one, just the information is just wrong. Okay, two, it creates information overload. And the big problem with information overload is that it is just gobs of information for the doctor to go through, and therefore they miss things. The average record is equivalent to 56% of Shakespeare's Hamlet. So you say, oh, just remove, remove the medical record. Like, if you... Like, listen, I'm an internist. Like that's, I'm a professional medical record reviewer. Like, that's, that's like a huge part of my job. Like, surgeons cut, internists review medical records, okay? And so anytime somebody came from another place and they're like, I have all my records with me, funk, or I got it on a disc or whatever, like, most doctors, like, don't want that because all that means is that they have to read half of Hamlet. And frankly... The doctor doesn't want to read half of Hamlet. So actually, the major in my opinion, the majority of doctors actually don't want to have like universally shared medical records. The majority of doctors don't want to be able to have patients carry their, mo their medical record from one hospital system to another hospital system because the doctor doesn't want to read half of Hamlet. And oh, by the way, half of half of Hamlet is just copy and pasted junk. So... That junk that's in there for billing purposes. So you what, so literally what you do go through, right, if 50% of it's copy and pasted, is you, you just skim it. So what, if, if you're looking at 10, and then given the length of these medical records, if you see 10 patients, which most doctors are seeing at least twice as many of the patients, then just for 10 patients, you need to read the equivalent of 85 pages, of which 42 and a half pages is just copy and pasted stuff. And it's across 691 notes. So what that means is, is that reviewing a medical record is an exercise in skimming through gobs and gobs of what appear to be extraneous information and then trying to find these golden nuggets of relevant information. And that is super hard to do. Junk, 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 ooh, important nugget. Junk, 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 ooh, important nugget, right? So what happens? One, one, you even have an error of omission or an error of commission where you're just looking through all the junk in so much detail that you, you can't even spend enough time with the patient. You can't see enough patients. The administration is going to be browbeating you for having bad productivity in a fee-for-service environment. And so the alternative is you just skim through the note as fast as you can and you miss gobs of those golden nuggets because all you're trying to do is sift through the chaff of the copying pasting and find the wheat of a previous diagnosis, a previous uh, scan result, a, a previous procedure, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so it's a big source of error. Now, I really applaud the people at the University of Pennsylvania for doing this study. I think it's super important. And here it is. You started watching this video. You didn't even know that this problem existed. You're like, I just go to the hospital and they keep track of my records and they, they just, they know what went on with me because it's in the record. And in fact, the notes within that EMR are a mess, and this is why. Now, I will leave you with one final conclusion. There are some hospital systems that are trying to do something to, fi to fix this. So the Sanford Hospital System, not Stanford, not out in California, the Sanford Hospital System, it's based out of South Dakota, they actually have note templates built into their EMR so that this copying and pasting is actually minimized and a very succinct, because in, in fact, the less is more in a note. The shorter you can write your note and the more succinct you can be, the more effective a communication tool it is with other physicians. 
And so to the extent that you can have a template that's very succinct and you don't have people doing all this copying and pasting outside of that template, then that's much more helpful in terms of facilitating the communication among physicians. And when I would read sort of a, a beautifully succinct note that was clear, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of surgeons write fantastically succinct notes, then I'd be like, I mean, it was like a work of art. It was like a Van Gogh because you knew exactly what was going on with the patient, you knew exactly what they did, and you knew exactly what their plan was going forward in a very short period of time. And it was a beautiful note, and it resulted in better patient care. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Zine.